Hello, I'm Tech Sergeant Michelle Johnson, Junior Enlisted Representative on the National Guard Joint Diversity Executive Council. The purpose of this presentation, How to Start My Joint Diversity Executive Council, is to provide you with a step-by-step -step guide to creating a Joint Diversity Executive Council in your state, territory, or in the district. All of the information contained in this presentation is based on the version 14 draft copy of the Leader's Guide to National Guard Joint Diversity Executive Councils. You can find this document in the draft form on Millbook and the State Joint Diversity Council Group Forum. The document has received positive feedback since its introduction to the field at this year's National Guard Diversity Conference held this past May. Since the conference, we have received improvements and recommendations from over 200 individuals in the field. The changes have been incorporated and the current draft is currently going through the approval process with the projected completion date of mid-August. One of the hallmarks of embedding diversity, inclusiveness, and cultural competence into our organization is the establishment of diversity councils and integrated processes to institutionalize diversity. First, we will discuss why diversity councils are needed in the National Guard, emphasizing our mission readiness needs. Then a brief overview of the purpose will be discussed, focused on the efforts to achieve mission goals. From here, we will start to look at how to create our diversity councils, which will lead us into the process for getting a council started in your state, territory, or in the district. Now that we have a brief overview of the flow of the presentation, let's start with why diversity councils are important to our organization. The National Guard must increase its internal complexity and increase its coordinated diversity in order to maintain mission effectiveness in the face of complex mission requirements. The National Guard Bureau Joint Diversity Executive Council has established two main focal points, valuing diversity and managing diversity. Valuing diversity means genuinely appreciating the different human qualities that distinguish each of us as unique individuals. Managing diversity is developing and integrating those unique differences and human qualities to effectively and efficiently meet our mission requirements across the globe. Diversity is more than race, color, gender, or ethnicity. Diversity is all those things and any other dimension making each of us who we are as an individual. The purpose of institutionalizing diversity in the National Guard is to ensure we achieve our mission goals. Our working environment is evolving, forcing organizations, military and civilian, to change the way they do business. To combat the upcoming challenges in our global environment, we must all learn to work together in an effort to find ways to be more effective force while creating efficiencies in our daily processes. So how do we meet this mission to institutionalize diversity in the National Guard? Ultimately, change starts with you. You or anyone in the National Guard organization can initiate a council for TAG approval. The first step for you to get this process initiated is by diagnosing your state. If you refer to page 17 of the JDEC Leader's Guide, you will find content to help you understand the meaning of quantitative and qualitative diagnosis. Page 18 of the guide provides you a list of questions to help you complete the diagnosis process as a tool to present to your TAG when requesting approval to start a council. In addition, a good source to obtain quantitative and qualitative data is from, defense, is from the Defense Equal Opportunity Management Institute, DOMI, at DOMI.org. This is an organization that can help you develop, disseminate, and analyze surveys, providing you a clear picture of your organization. Page 21 of the guide provides you with additional preliminary questions if your state, territory, or the district does not already have a diversity council or if the council is inactive. The questions to ask yourself are, is a charter in place? See Appendix D for the sample JDEC council charter. Who should be on the council? See Appendix C for the sample TAG JDEC appointment letter with recommended membership. What makes a council successful? See Appendix A for the sample TAG checklist providing critical information to your TAG concerning the position of diversity in his or her state, territory, or in the district. All of these documents will be important to establish the current state of your organization and create a plan for where you want to see your organization in the future. Now it is time to go through the process to getting started. First, in order to make a formal recommendation to start a council, contact the Special Assistant to the CNGB on Diversity, Colonel Andre Berry. 
or Ms. Phyllis Brantley, Chief Diversity and Special Emphasis Programs. One of these individuals will make a formal council recommendation to your TAG on your behalf to start a diversity council. Upon formal council recommendation from NGB, complete the TAG checklist found in Appendix A, completed by the individual initiating the process. Next, you will start soliciting willing members for the council. Solicit members interested in diversity that may have expertise in diversity issues. Finally, you will complete the JDEC appointment letter found in Appendix C and the council charter found in Appendix D. Once the formal recommendation phase is complete, you will move into the TAG approval request phase. In this phase, you will prepare the TAG approval request letter found in Appendix B and submit the following completed documents to your TAG. Completed TAG checklist, JDEC appointment letter, and the JDEC charter. Other optional supporting documents you may include in your package to the TAG are request letter, diagnosis, question and answer, page 18, and any other data that may be important to your TAG. Once your package is complete and submitted to the TAG for approval, it is time to take continuous action and start holding council meetings. Upon your TAG's official approval, the first meeting should be held within 30 to 60 days to communicate the purpose, mission, and goals of the council. In this initial meeting, you will set up the council by nominating and voting for council officers. An explanation of all the roles and responsibilities can be found on pages 14 through 16 of the JDEC guide. You can also find a sample meeting agenda in Appendix M. Now the goal is to continue meeting at least quarterly and working towards the goals set forth by NGB found in Appendix F. The goal is to educate organizations on diverse issues affecting the global mission. This is a critical task that requires established leadership engagement along with timely execution and commitment to ensure your council is effective. In conclusion, we discussed why diversity councils are needed in the National Guard, improving teamwork, creativity, cohesiveness, and organizational productivity. Then a brief overview of the purpose focused on the efforts to achieve mission goals by accepting individuality as a critical mission resource. Finally, we established how you can start a council by diagnosing the current diverse environment of your organization, which led into the process for getting a council started in your state, territory, or in the district. In the National Guard, diversity is a cultural climate, which allows people to maximize their potential by embracing and promoting each other's holistic characteristics. Your points of contact for questions concerning establishing or maintaining a Joint Diversity Executive Council is Colonel Andre Berry, Special Assistant to the CNGB on Diversity and Ms. Phyllis Brantley, Chief Diversity and Special Emphasis Program. You can also find diversity training resources and tools in Millbook by joining the Joint Diversity Executive Council community. Diversity is our National Guard, always ready, always there.